This is breaking news. Good afternoon. I'm Laura Cavanaugh, Fire Commissioner K A V A N A G H. Today at 10:24 a.m., we got calls for fire and smoke at the building behind me, 429 East 52nd Street on the 20th floor. Fire, EMS, and dispatch did an extraordinary job rescuing a number of civilians, including an incredible roof rope rescue that many of you have seen on the 20th floor. 20, total patient count as of right now is 38, two critical, five serious, and the rest minor. The cause of the fire is a lithium ion battery connected to a micro mobility device. I cannot emphasize enough the extraordinary work of our members this morning in unbelievably dangerous conditions. I'm going to hand it over to Chief Weeb for some operational details. Thank you, Commissioner. Step into the mic, please. Spill your name. Please. My name is Frank Lieb, L E E B. Uh, I am the citywide talk commander today, and uh, our units were on scene in just over three minutes. We we're confronted with a heavy fire condition on the 20th floor. Our members did an amazing job. You saw the life saving rope rescue. That's a, that is a last resort. In the FDNY, we rescued two civilians from the from the fire apartment. It's uh, what we saw today was our training, our teamwork, and our absolute dedication from the units that operated up there with the life saving rope to passing them off to our exceptionally trained EMS personnel to get these patients all off scene in a matter of a couple of minutes and off to the local hospitals. Uh, the lithium ion battery adds a, a different degree when we talk about the the fire dynamics of it, these, these rooms flash over in just a mere matter of seconds, as the commissioner made mention to. So I'll pass it over to our EMS uh, chief on scene to give us a patient count. Thank you, Chief Lieb. Uh, chief Pataki, P-A-T-A-K-Y, I'm the chief of the EMS Academy. First name? Joseph. Thank you. Uh, so as the commissioner said, uh, we had uh, 38 patients today. Uh, uh, excuse me, five of which were members of the service. We had two uh, life-threatening injuries uh, secondary to smoke inhalation. They were all transported to Cornell Hospital. Uh, there is likely to be an increase in the number of patients as more and more families come down uh, and are evaluated by EMS. Thank you, Chief. Uh, now Chief Flynn with the Bureau of Fire Investigation. Uh, my name is Dan Flynn, F-L-Y-N-N. -N. I'm the Chief Fire Marshal. As the commissioner mentioned, uh, the cause of this fire is a lithium ion battery, uh, which is meant to power a micro mobility device. Uh, this is close to our 200th fire this year, where the cause of the fire is a lithium ion battery for a micro, micro mobility device. Uh, this, this particular apartment, we believe uh, the occupant was repairing bikes uh, in the building, um, and the fire was right behind the front door. Uh, we recovered at least five bikes from this apartment. Uh, so we just want to stress uh, our safety tips uh, that the commissioner, I believe, will speak to. Yeah, despite the warm weather today, we are heading into the cold winter season. Fires do go up, and so we really implore all New Yorkers to ensure that they and their families are safe. We will be out in this community and communities all over the city in the days and weeks ahead, um, handing out fire safety literature, handing out smoke alarms. But we also want to emphasize the rising cause of fires from e-bikes um, and to ensure that families are making sure that they are following the safest possible way to use these, including not charging them overnight when they are asleep, including making sure they are certified um, and that the batteries that they are using are not damaged in any way. Miles? Yeah, Chief, um, you've been sort of sounding alarm for about a year about these e-bike fires and they seem to, this year, have been going crazy. What happens when an e-bike catches fire um, and then the sign outside of the building is about to bring e-bikes in? Yeah, we're seeing them uh, an exponential increase uh, that we've seen over the last few years. Uh, these these fires, they they come without warning, and when they when they do go on fire, they're so intense that any combustibles in the area will will catch fire. So we've seen secondary fires, and uh, this isn't really what we've seen traditionally, where uh, fires are slow to develop. We're encountering a, a fully developed fire when the fire units are arriving here. So that's that's where this differs from what we've seen in the past. And then we have six fatalities this year just from these, these batteries to power the micro mobility devices. Yes. Um, Carol? Uh, I spoke to someone who lives on the 20th floor. He said that um, in the past, the fire department has been at that particular apartment, the fire apartment, numerous times for fire, smoke, domestic uh, problems. Can you confirm any of that? Uh, we are looking into that, but cannot confirm that at this time. Video of a woman hanging out of a window, being rescued. Do you know her condition? 
I don't believe we know her condition specifically at this time, but we can update you on that later. Are the yeah. people who were rescued by the road, those were in the fire, built by our apartment? I'm going to let the chief speak to that. Yes, yeah, so the, the victims that were rescued by a life-saving rope, they were both occupants of the fire apartment 20F. Um, and a very important message to make sure that we are aware of here, right? So this is a, a high-rise fireproof multiple dwelling. We typically don't get fire extension outside of the fire apartment. It's critically important that you listen to what the fire department is saying. Sheltering in place, closing your door saves lives. I can't stress that enough. This is not a wood frame building. It's, we, if we stay in there and close the door, we can ride the fire out typically within, within that. A lot of times our dispatcher will give you directions as well. Follow that dis, those directions because they relay that information to the command post. That can save your life in a fire. Understanding what type of building you live in and knowing the best way, whether you should have an escape plan, whether you should shelter in place, or whatever it is, a meeting point outside, those are critically important messages to make sure that we get out to every resident and visitor of New York City. Chief, you asked, for, um, you asked for helicopters. Were there people on the roof? There was like additional reports of people on the roof. Yes, yeah, so some people that left their apartment above the fire floor, above the fire apartment, they did indeed evacuate to the roof. So we did not request uh, elev we did not request aviation from NYPD. They automatically put it up on on a certain alarm level, and we did not we did not use it because we don't consider using uh, a helicopter to affect a roof. You know, to get people off of the roof, it's nearly impossible to uh, to put a helicopter down on a roof, and it's just a dangerous uh, practice. Yeah, I'm not aware of the door being left open at this at this point. What will come with the investigation? That will come with the investigation. The fire marshals are on scene now doing their investigation. And I uh, could you clarify uh, are there uh, ages or genders or any other information about the, the injured uh, and there's definitely no deaths and was the fire alarm and fire instructions for residents in the building adequate because a number of residents said they didn't hear a fire alarm. In fact, they're not even sure if there is a fire alarm or if there is a system to alert uh, residents in the case of a fire. So we don't have the pedigree on the patients at this time, and everything that you just mentioned will be part of our investigation. Did you know if there was fire? Yeah, there John, your channel seven. So can you talk about how many families were displaced and the help they're receiving from the Red Cross? So I don't know the exact number of families. We can get that. Certainly the Red Cross always comes on scene after something like this and will ensure that the families have a place to stay tonight if they can't go back to their uh, apartment, as will the mayor's community affairs office and our community affairs office. And, and uh, New York City Emergency Management, which is here with us. So do you know if there were a fire alarm in the apartment? apartment? Go ahead, Carol, please. Uh, is, are you, you don't know if there's a fire alarm that went off? That is part of our investigation. Thank we can't Carol. confirm yes, at this time. Yeah, so the fire apartment itself, particularly in the area of the uh, of the windows, that area, all the way up to the door, is uh, is pretty heavily damaged. There's some rooms that didn't receive as much damage, depending on the location within the apartment. But it, uh, the apartment is unable to be occupied at this point. Last question. Five. Five, were other residents not closing the doors? Is that why it continued? And is that why you mentioned that earlier, that people must listen to the directions that the FDNY is giving? So that's all part of our investigation in the case of this fire, but certainly close the door is one of our consistent safety messages and will continue to be. Can we finish up with your safety message, please? Yes, so please go to fdnysmart.org. It is incredibly important to keep New Yorkers and their families safe, um, especially going into these winter months, that things like close the door, change your clock, change your batteries, um, that we do everything possible to keep our families safe. And we will be out in the community, this community and others doing that in the days and weeks ahead. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.